Right. Nah, it's still like it's recording. You gotta put sticky notes over it to, to disguise it. <laughs> if he comes in, I'll tell you. Yeah, tell me if he's coming. I need to put these on. Josh, keep a lookout. Josh, what are you doing? Josh, look out. Oh, oh. Scared me. Just the look at this. Oh my god, don't look at it. Sorry. Stop laughing. It's not funny. I apologize. I don't think so. Okay. Oh, just open it on your Chromebook and edit it that way. I think no, no, you can still make it happy. Three. 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 The other pass is so cold. It's cold outside. Yeah. I avoided, I avoided it in the winter. Also, sometimes the summer because it's too hot. Julio, stop falling down. I didn't see his backpack. Julio, I need to have a backpack. Sometimes when I don't want to be social, I just look at my blank screen on my phone. I have a real screen. This is my kids. I'm just making the making the clock go up and down. Hey, Lindsay. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Aiden Flynn to guidance. He needs guidance. Mason went to guidance. He needs Hello, everybody. Hello. Oh. Yeah. 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 Well, it's been a good day. Oh, crappy. I want to The picture you posted in the first hour, I can't see anything. I know. I'm going to try and retake it this hour because the uh, lighting is bad. I zoomed in like 13 times. I know. Did you try it from your phone or your Chromebook? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to try and take it. I'm going to try and retake it this hour. Because I, I saw that too and I was like, yeah. All right. So today, we're looking at what the expectations are for the test. Uh, let me take attendance real fast. We have our valuable TA, Caracas. She apparently is eating soup. It's so cold. Oh my gosh. A black, is that a Chromebook charger? No. No. This is for my phone. He doesn't care. You can't charge Chromebooks in the school. It doesn't even work. The electricity doesn't come out. I don't want. I almost did, and I was like, no. I'm gonna have to reset it if I do that. It might be worth it to watch him not be able to charge his Chromebook. Wait, is that, you, but is that like that actually it turns all the power on the rim off. I can't tell what he's doing. I know, right? It's so, it's so confusing. They always say as a teacher, you should never use sarcasm because kids don't understand it. And it's like, wow, I'm really bad at this then because I use a lot of sarcasm. I think so too. I think they say, you know, like, yeah. All right, so must know. I'm going to tell you exactly what the expectations are. So pull your must knows out for If you don't have them, open your Chromebook, take out your must knows, and make a copy of them so you can write this stuff down. Why do all the kids call their parents by their first name? I don't call them. They don't. They only put in your girl. No, I call my dad Jimbo. I call my mom Amy. Like to his face. That's what I heard. He said Amy made something. And I was like, well, I know his mom's name. Wait, 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 wait. All right. Time to take out the test. Unit 3. 
The test? Yeah. Uh, sure. No. I already gave a copy to Abby anyway, so just ask her. For it. It's got all the wrong questions on it. I heard that. How did it go? Boom, boom, boom. No, he said his guidance counselor. He needed guidance. I sent him down there. He seemed like he was feeling susceptible to peer pressure. He's been vaping a lot in the bathroom. Okay. Every time you go in the bathroom nowadays, is there a kid vaping in there? Pretty much. Yeah, it's just, it's just, this school is just a vape zone. So over Thanksgiving break, she was like, over Thanksgiving break, and she was like, no. We're sitting at a table of like 20. And so I was talking to my grandma, and everyone's listening. And I didn't know. So my brother started baking when he went to college. So that like made my mom really mad. But she didn't tell my grandma. And I did not know that she didn't tell my grandma. So then you start talking so about So I said something, and everyone just went dead quiet. And my grandma like whipped her head to my brother and was like, what? Are you sure yeah, really quiet. Really awkward. You're like, my bad, yo. Uh, it's not Thanksgiving unless somebody hates somebody. So here we go. Julio! Julio! Pod, now! Wait, did you hand out these for you? I did, at some point. Alright, so there are a total of 16 multiple choice questions. And then there are 7 free response questions. Now, these seven oh. response questions are actually way more worth way more than seven points. So my goal here is to kind of lay it out so you can see how this stuff is um, sort of projected point-wise. And then I think you'll be sort of pleasantly, not pleasantly, but you'll be at least happy as to where the emphasis is because it's the spot we spent the most time. Ready? No. Okay. What? I feel bad for Katie. I'm trying to find her a sheet. Should give Emma one too. What is he yelling about? I didn't even hear him. What, what did you say? You made Sloppy Joe's for dinner last night? That's the one. It's all about Sloppy Janes. Sloppy Janes, ground turkey. Weird. I like ground turkey. In small quantities. Wait, can I have one? Can I have one? Can I have one? I have that many. Josh has one. I was absent the day we got them. That sucks. What's your name? Found some. Found some. Why does this class never have their mustache? I found it. Any other ones? To the right that I have my mustache. All right. Here we go. First question. That was the test. That wasn't the must nose. You started going for it. It was like money was on the ground. All right. So first question is going to be about the general properties. So dissolving water, high melting points, that lab we did at the very beginning of the unit. Ceramic, covalence, metallic. You going to take one of those? Yes. Yeah, I knew it. Um, after that, it starts getting into, OK, well, what do the electrons do for the three types of bonding? So mine's kind of off the screen a little bit here to try and include as much as possible. So ionic is stealing, covalent sharing. What's metallic? Nothing. C. Good. It's the C of electrons. There was a little chart that we had for ionic, covalent, metallic. That chart's really helpful for that section. Okay. Um, the third question is also about just the nature of electrons and bonding. And then we jump all the way to naming. And the two naming things kind of go together. You can't really separate them. They're mixed. Like, you have to know how to do ionic and covalence to answer the question. Yeah. So, it is what it is. And the fifth question then jumps out of that section. So now we're jumping all the way down to bond angles for question five. Question six, drawing a Lewis dot diagram. So simple Lewis CCC expanded. Question seven, you're also drawing a Lewis dot diagram. Are these multiple choice? These are the multiple choice. Wait, is the ionic and covalent the multiple choice? So far. So far, all I've done the multiple choice. So I like to color code them so if it's black for the multiple choice on there and black on the slashes. And I'll make red slashes for the free spots. Eight 
is hybridization. Now you do not have to describe, it does not say describe what hybridization is. It says name the hybridization. And that's all you would be able to have to do. Like what's the hybridization around whatever that atom might be. Nine kind of falls between must knows. So I have been describing it in shapes. I think it's the best place to put it for question number nine. Um, but you have to kind of be able to draw a Lewis dot, but also like know the shape. So I'm figuring if you know the shape, you probably know how to draw a Lewis dot diagram. 10 is about shapes. And then 11 jumps down to, okay, polarity. How do you figure out what polarity is? 12, I think, is going to be the most missed multiple choice question. It is about polarity, but you kind of have to draw a lot of stuff to figure out what the answer is. Now you can sort of eyeball it based off of things we've said in class, but you still might have to draw some of these structures out. Which takes us to 13. 13 is about placing partial charges. Now in first hour and second hour, I gave this information out, so I'm gonna give it to you guys because someone asked this question, like how would that be a multiple choice question? Well, I could ask you like in the molecule of water, where is the partial negative? Oh, no. Katie's right. right, like it's on the oxygen, right? Because you're pulling the electrons toward the oxygen. So the partial negative is on the oxygen, thereby the partial positives are on the hydrogen. So do you really have to place the charge on there, per se? No, it's a multiple choice question, but you have to understand where someone would place the charge to answer the question, okay? So that's just to clarify that since we did not spend a lot of practice doing that. And that is the only question about that must know on the entire test. Mariana? Yeah. You'll be given a, a, like a oh. periodic table and a polyatomic ion sheet on your test. Okay. And it's just, not yeah, not your own because it's too easy to write stuff down on it yeah. and cheat because like shape names, hybridization, you could write all that on there. Right Takes us to question 14. 14 is also about polarity, but it's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. And then 15, you are naming an organic compound. And then 16, you're also doing the same thing. And there's your multiple choice. Pretty evenly laid out. Now, the free response, becomes more obvious as to where I thought the emphasis was. Now, in every free response question except for one, you have some choice and to how you describe it. Let me explain. So the first free response question is going to be about naming. And it's worth three points. Now the way it works is you're given five different structures. Ionic, covalence, they're all mixed together. I did not put organic ones in there because I thought it'd be nicer to just have the organic stuff separated since we talked about that so much further away from one another. So in that five choices, you pick three to name. So can you avoid certain things? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you have five options. You pick three that you want to name. What if I name all five? Well, then I'm going to grade all of them. And the ones that are wrong, I'm going to count as wrong because you can't read instructions. Well, they're all right. Then you win. No. Okay. So I would really, really encourage you not to name all five because you're going to run out of time. Like I, like the test is kind of long. And so to give you more time, I made it selection based. So like here's five, name three. Here's four, draw two. Like you'll see in every question, like I'm cutting it in half. Otherwise you would run out of time on the test. Because we have five less minutes in class tomorrow because of the assembly. Mm -hmm. If it does get pushed to Monday because the assembly goes long for some reason, like you guys are still getting five minutes left because so that's what first hour and second hour got. So I will steal your test five minutes left in class, just to make it fair. Mariana? Um, so like, are all three response questions just like drawing, or do you have to explain something? There is zero explanation on anything. Like, there's nothing to explain, really. It's a bunch of drawing stuff. All right, so that is the first free response question. The next free response question would be writing formulas. And again, it's three points. Guess how many options you have to pick from? Four. Well, five. Yeah, but... So there's five things that have names. 
ionic or covalence, and then you pick three of them and write the for their formulas. Too low. Too low. You have to write it. Tell me, tell me. No, you do not. It just says write the like formula or write the formula for it, and it's all or nothing on it. Okay. Takes us to question 19. On question 19, it is going to cover this entire set of must knows. And so the reason why is because you're going to draw a Lewis dot diagram, state the hybridization, state the shape, and state the bond angles. So you need to be able to do all of that. So on the first section of it, there are two of them. They're each worth five points. Like the first two are going to be non expanded. So it'll be simple Lewis and CCC. It'll say, here's four of them, pick two, draw it out in 3D, label the hybridization, label the bond angles, and what did I say, label the shape name. Okay, so that'd be the non-expanded ones. The next page of it is the same thing, only now it's the expanded octet ones. So I've separated them because otherwise if I put them all on one page, you could just avoid the expanded octets. And I want to make sure you know both. Okay. Wait, so there's four questions on that? So on one page, there's two questions, but there's four options. So there'll be four molecules and say, okay, for two of them, draw it, write the name of the shape, write the hybridization, write the bond angle. Then do it again for another one that you didn't do. Then there's two you didn't draw. On the next page, same thing, but now the four options changed, and they're all expanded octet ones. So they're SP3D or SP3D2s. So it's the weirder shapes. Now, if you yeah. cannot draw it, it is possible to earn partial credit as long as you know like the angles for a particular shape. So like, let's say you come across one and you're like, dude, I have no idea how to draw this. I suck at drawing. You're losing two points from there. But then you call it a, I don't know, a trigonal bipyramid and you label the angles correctly and the hybridization correctly based off a trigonal bipyramid, I'm giving you three out of the five points because you knew that stuff was right. You just couldn't draw it. So you, it's not an all or nothing type situation. Katie? Do we have to just say the angles or like label where they You just are? have to say them. I, I, yeah, it just says state, shape, hybridization, about, you don't have to label them. Yeah. Wait, is that single no. 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 That would be awesome. All right. After you do that, you have drawing a structure, two points for the organic. So I give you um, four organic molecule names, and you got to draw two of those zigzag structures. So if you know for a fact you suck at those carboxylic acid ones, then don't pick that one. Do like an alcohol or do an al like the one that ends in aim, okay? And then you go to a question that does the opposite way, so you name it based off the shorthand structure. Again, you have four options, you only have to do two. And it's an all or nothing situation, like you either get it or you don't, okay? The very last question is what I call the perfect paper break breaker. And it's really not that hard, but it's like those questions like where I showed you the practice problem with CL20. And I was like, hey, CL20, uh, da, 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 it's an explosive. And then at the end, it's like, how would you bond on an NO2? And if you really look at it, it's not that hard of a question. That's what this question is like. It's just a weird question. And it's most closely related to the must know in terms of shapes. And it's only worth two points. So now when we break down the total value of the free response, it is not seven points. You got 3, 6, 8, 10, 12, plus 20. It's 32 points from the free response. So it's double the multiple choice. Two thirds of your test comes from that. Which means your entire test is 48 points, or about 2% per question. Okay? So now if I'm looking at this, I'm saying, okay, well, how does it break down point wise by category? So up here, 3, 4, you have 10 points in that first section six of which comes from naming and formula writing. The bottom section of organic, you only have six points. So where does the vast majority of this test come from? Right. Where do we spend the vast majority of our time? Here. 32 of the 48 points come from that section, which is what you want. Like You want the emphasis on that section. 
right? Yeah. Because that's the stuff we've been doing. So I don't know about you, but what I would do when I get this task, if I know I'm going to be crunched for time and I know the vast majority of the points come from the free response, I actually am probably going to go to the free response first. Fill out all my free response stuff and then go back to the multiple choice. Because you're guaranteed to see some multiple choice question, you're just like, what, the, what, what is this? But it's one point, right? It's not as big of a deal. Whereas the free response, like, that's 32 of the 48 points. It's a lot. And you know you're not going to get all that stuff wrong. You might get a little bit here or there, but like, you have to do well as well as you can there. Okay? Questions? So, to clarify, um, you do not need to understand the nature of energy with bonding. I didn't really cover that too much in the very beginning. We'll talk more about that later. And then, as far as the functional groups, you do not need to label them, and you do not need to know them by name. So, like, if I asked you, like, for an alcohol, you, should, you don't have to know that that's a hydroxyl group that's attached. You literally, there's an OH on there, it changes the name to something anal. So the practice we did those last two days, that's all you have to be able to do in that section. Okay? I took away the really nasty questions. Like I left the very straightforward questions on there. Like it's not, the questions themselves are not hard. So why is this average gonna be 10% lower? People don't study. People don't study, and is the material itself easy? No. No, like you can't like fudge your way through it. Like you have to know it or not. And so on classroom, I'll take another picture of this and post it because the one that first showed up is not so nice in case you have to be checking the stream. Like, this is really hard to read. Yeah, that's pretty tough to read. So I'll try to make a better one. And then Ed Naraki, if you know Ed Naraki, made a Quizlet for Unit 3. And he's got all the stuff on there. Damn. So you can take his Quizlet if you'd like. You have to type those in my hand. So it's up there. I shared it in case you guys wanted to try it out. What I would do if I were you is basically like, I'm going to make sure that I can draw every single Lewis dot structure that, that exists. Now on your test, the Lewis dot structures that you see are all going to be structures you already have seen. Like there are no new molecules on there. Every single one of them, on the expanded section or on the um, non-expanded section, they have shown up on a quiz or a worksheet before. And they're not the hard ones. They're one centralized app. Okay? So get the straightforward text. There'll be no surprises. Okay. It's your time to study and get ready. I'm here if you got questions. I'm going to try and get a better picture of this. Yep. Wait, Mr. Bowman? Yeah. What's the one you said that was going to throw people? There is a one question on our